What a great day in Georgia. Man, I am so excited to be here. I want to thank you to the NRA. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. You guys, single-handedly, may have saved our republic last year. God bless you for that. It is so humbling to be here before you today. Being in the United States Senate is new to me. I spent my career in the real world where you live. It's a different world in Washington. It's humbling. I was talking to my wife the other night. It reminded me how humbling it is. I said, babe, did you ever think in your wildest dream that I'd be in the United States Senate? She said, honey, I hate to tell you this, you were never in my wildest dream. <laughs> Folks, I wanted to come today because my mission in life is to call this crisis. We have another shot at it, but we are still in the middle of it. I believe this is the most dangerous crisis in the history of our republic. I think it has three dimensions. The first dimension is we have a global security crisis. The world may be more difficult and more dangerous than any time in my lifetime. The second dimension is we have a debt crisis. My wife says I can bring any cocktail party to its knees talking about this, but it's what I do. We have got to solve this. What I want to talk today about, though, may be more serious than either of those because I believe this one is republic threatening. Today, we have a constitutional crisis. I don't use those words lightly. And not only that, they're not just my words. Jonathan Turley, a Democrat law professor from George Washington University, has stated that Former President Obama has created the greatest constitutional crisis in our history. By blocking Congress, he has used executive orders and regulatory mandates to change the direction of our country. He figured out how to run the country without Congress. He created the fourth arm of government, the regulators. And it'll take decades before we can undo all of that damage. He created a dangerous precedent for future presidents to run the government and run our country without the three branches of government being in balance. In last year's election, thanks to the help of the NRA, Americans voted to change the direction of our country. I think we have one more shot at this. Isn't it refreshing that we now have a president that will stand up for our Second Amendment rights? Isn't it refreshing that we have a president that will stand up and enforce laws? Isn't it refreshing that we have a president that will stand up to those around the world who would do us harm? You may remember that there were only two senators standing firm for Donald J. Trump last year in the early days. But when I got discouraged, I looked around and there you were, the NRA. Thank you for that. I believe that you had as big an impact on that national election last year as any other group in America. And I don't say that lightly. I spent a lot of time in the field and I ran into you everywhere. I saw your ads, I saw your people, I saw your enthusiasm, and it carried the day. I am so proud to be a member of the NRA when I see an organization like this make that kind of difference for our country. Thank you for that. President Trump, President Trump shares our outrage with the dysfunction in Washington. He understands that prior disregard for our Constitution will no longer be permitted. When President Trump was sworn in, he laid out his priorities for our country, and job one was to get our economy going again. It's very simple. He's laid out four priorities, just like a businessman would. I'm privileged to be in some meetings with this president, and it's so refreshing to see a man looking to get results, not just talk about it. This year, tomorrow actually, is the last day of his first 100 days. And I will tell you, it's been a whopping success. I was asked the other day, give him a grade. And I said, well, you know, it's absolutely an A plus. If I could give him anything higher, I would. I see this man moving in so many directions. He's moving at a business pace, not a bureaucratic pace. He's moving to pull back the regulations that have sucked the very life out of this economy over the last eight years. He is fighting hard to bring justice back to our country. He, he nominated Neil Gorsuch, and I'm so proud to be a member of the Senate. 
that just a few weeks ago, we stood up to the first ever partisan filibuster attempt to block a nominee from the United States Supreme Court, and we confirmed Neil Gorsuch, United States Supreme Court. <laughs> President Trump called on Congress to fix this debacle called Obamacare, and we're well on the way to do just that. And lastly, he is going to, one way or the other, clean up this archaic tax system that we have in the United States. And you know what? People like you and me are listening. Consumer confidence is at a 20-year high. CEO confidence has not been higher in 13 years. Manufacturers have not been this enthusiastic about investing capital to grow jobs in 20 years. In addition, this president is enforcing federal law. He will stop the insanity called sanctuary cities, y'all. This is a president that will move, remove felons who are in this country illegally. This is a president that doesn't veto things that will reverse onerous rules that violate our rights as Americans. I actually put a bill in recently that actually scrapped an Obama era rule that was put in last year that threatened due process and second amendment rights. And you know what? He's already signed that sucker in the law. Yeah. President Trump is delivering results, but there's so much more to be done. You know that, he's just gotten started. 100 days is an arbitrary number on a calendar. He knows what he wants to do. We know what needs to be done. The problem is we have to get through the archaic system in Washington. We need to restore the balance between the three branches of government. We need to support law enforcement officers and give them our full, undivided support. We need to fund our men and women in the military and stop this nonsense of not building an army and a navy and an air force. Do you know we have the smallest army since World War II, the smallest navy since World War I, and the oldest and smallest air force ever? Thank you, Barack Obama. We will fix this. I'm not gonna say a lot about the wall. I had, you had a better guy talk about that earlier. We call him the president. But he will build that wall. He will stop sanctuary cities. He is moving to protect the Second Amendment rights. And we have to go further. We have to pass a concealed carry reciprocity law. I thought I might get a little rise out of you with that one. We need to fill 127 federal and circuit judge openings that we have right now across this country. This president has told us that that's also job one. And finally, folks, after 230 years, it's finally time to bring term limits to the United States Congress. Let's be clear though, this is bigger than me. It's bigger than you. It's really bigger than Donald Trump. That's hard to do. <laughs> this is about the freedom of our children and our children's children. And you know it, that's why you do this. Ronald Reagan reminded us, he warned us actually, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We don't pass it down in the bloodstream. We have to fight for it protect it and pass it on so they can do the same thing. Or one day in our sunset years, we'll be sitting around telling our children what it was once like in America when women and men were free. Not on my watch, not on your watch, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for hanging in there with that. We have a real moment of opportunity what we did in November last year is the first step, but now the real heavy lifting starts. We absolutely have to get back to our founding principles. And, and ladies and gentlemen, electing Donald Trump is going to be easy compared to what I'm about to tell you. We have gotten so far away from these things, and I mean it, this is why I ran. I saw this as a business guy, I saw it as a father, I saw it as a husband, I saw it as a private citizen. 
But we have to get back to our founding principles. It's just this simple. Economic opportunity for everyone. Fiscal responsibility. Limited government. And finally, individual liberty. We have something in the United States that no other country in the history of the world has. It's called a constitution. We use that word lightly. Many of us carry it around in our pockets. George Washington, in a very early time, 1795, reminded us that the Constitution is my guide, which I will never abandon. I can't think of better words for a senator in the United States Senate in 2017 facing the problems that we have today. I did not run for the United States Senate to simply let bureaucrats trample on that Constitution. I didn't simply run for the Senate to be part of a broken system. I didn't run to accept the status quo. You're not here to accept the status quo. Folks, we simply have to work together to, pro to protect our rights under that Constitution, to seize this moment of opportunity, and finally change the direction of our country. Thank you for saving us from the brink of disaster last year. Thank you for electing Donald J. Trump. And thank you for all you do to protect our Second Amendment rights and all of our rights under that Constitution. God bless you. God bless the NRA. And God bless United States of America. Thank you.